Hey folks and welcome to this quick look at the Asus Prime B350M-A motherboard for the new Ryzen AM4 platform. Now if like me you are dead set on building a Ryzen system on day one then you've probably came across the same issues. The motherboard supply has been absolutely abysmal. I, mean, I did not have this Asus board on pre-order, it was an MSI variant, but after being told by my supplier that it wasn't actually going to be here until April at the earliest, I decided to take a punt on this Asus board. Now I've never really used any other Asus product, but from what I've read on previous boards, the quality has generally been very good and it's fairly feature rich. So I had no hesitation in going for this and switching it from the MSI. Opening up the box you can see a very familiar packaging, we've just got the motherboard itself in its anti-static bag and a little compartment within the box which houses the two included SATA cables. If we remove the motherboard and the cardboard covering, we're then greeted with some additional extras. We've got the I.O. shield at the back, which is just the same as any other I.O. shield. Just simply clip it in and you're good to go. A small bag containing the M.2 fittings. Yes, that's right, the AM4 platform now supports M.2. And the usual paperwork and pointless driver installation CDs. It's worth noting that if you do buy an AM4 platform at the moment, don't use the drivers that come on the CD. They are changing at such a rapid rate, especially the BIOS is on the motherboard, that you want to be downloading the latest however you can and to try and update it by USB stick. Don't use the CD at all. The motherboard itself, it's what I would call feature rich for such a budget board. This was at the lower end of the B350 price range. We've got a good power delivery system and we've got space for four sticks of DDR4. Although at the moment only speeds of 2400 are currently supported. You can overclock it slightly but there's no guarantee that it'll work. The Corsair RAM that I'm using at the moment is rated up to 3 GHz but I can only run it at 2.4 GHz. Moving on to the other features of the board, we've got one PCI Express 3.0 slot and compared to some other boards, I really like the mechanism at the back for removing the GPU, it's really easy even with a massive GPU in there, you have no problem. It also comes with four USB 3.0 ports and two USB 3.1. You've got integrated LAN and audio and you've also got video out for when AMD released the latest line of APUs. At the bottom of the board, we've got space for two front USB headers and also six SATA 6 gigabit a second ports. As I've previously mentioned, there is also support for M.2 cards. The board also has something that I didn't realise when I bought it, and it's a few bits of LED illumination on it. It's orange and I've not been able to change it yet, I'm not sure if you can, but it was a nice feature to find on such a low priced board. So there you have it folks, a really quick overview of this board, what its features are, and I can honestly say that I've had no trouble building with it. It is on the bigger side of the Micro ATX boards, but even in my Corsair AAR case it fits in perfectly, and the layout is really good, there's no components that are overlapping or hard to get to. We've not got time to take a look at the BIOS today, but it is really feature packed and I've actually been really impressed by the BIOS on this Ryzen platform. So thanks a lot folks for taking a look at this ASUS B350M-A motherboard. If you're on the fence about buying one, it is absolutely spot on, it's a really high quality board and I've got absolutely no regrets about buying it. Personally, I would have liked to have seen a couple more fan headers on the board itself but it's not really a deal breaker. Like I said, ASUS are still working tirelessly on bringing this BIOS up to date. And things are only going to get better for this board as time goes on. The functionality is going to increase, the compatibility is going to increase. And if you're an early adopter like me, things are still only going to get better. Anyway folks, thanks so much for watching. You know what to do with those thumbs. And if you've not done so already, you can consider subscribing. We're going to be pumping out a few more videos in the next week with this Ryzen build, testing it with a few different cards and getting a little bit more in depth on the system. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.